Welcome to Talk to Brazil with Tom Riach, the business connector to business in Brazil. Welcome to Talk to Brazil, the business connection, a leading Brazil business podcast talking about business in the world. I'm Tom Riach, an American living in Brazil, known for business networking and talking from my podcast studio in Campinas, São Paulo, Brazil. Today's guest is Felipe Wesley de Souza, and he's talking with us from Londrina, Paraná, Brazil. I met Felipe through Eva Zhu. She was one of my guests from China who made the connection. Felipe Wesley de Souza has vast global business and education experience, having lived and worked in the USA for 14 years, China for nine years, and Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates for two years, and now in Brazil where he is co-founder of Tutor.id, the fastest growing online teacher's marketplace in the world. So with that, hello, Felipe, and welcome to Talk to Brazil, the business connection. Thank you, Tom. Happy to be here. And Felipe, just uh, for our listeners to understand, you've literally been around the world. Uh, and, I have. And you, and you understand the world. But tell us briefly about your global journey and your thoughts of what makes the world different, but more importantly, what makes it the same? Sure. Well, that is a... That's a huge question to, to tackle. So let me try to begin at the best place, which is probably the beginning. Um, so from Brazil, uh, my family moved to the U.S. Uh, for my, my father, actually, to, to study. Uh, I was 12 back then. Um, so in the U.S., did my middle school, high school, uh, did uh, my university degree, and then did grad school as well. Uh, so that's what the first 14 years uh, was all about. Um, got an opportunity to go to China uh, for one semester uh, as an exchange student to begin with back in 2005. Mm. Uh, and that's when things were kind of you know, blowing up in a good way um, for foreigners and, and, and international expats, right, right. in China. Right. Uh, but I was there. I was a student. I was, it was my last semester of university, and, you know, I got a little taste of Shanghai, <laughs> and, uh, I, and I left. I had to come back and graduate, and, and, and then, you know, came, coming back, and I think this is a very common feeling that a lot of people have when they go to China and then, and then they leave China, is that they miss it very, very much. Mm -hmm. They feel like they didn't have enough of it. So I came back to the U.S. I did my graduate uh, degree, uh, and and as soon as it was done, I was right back on the plane. Uh, <laughs> this time to this time to uh, the, a small a smaller city, not Shanghai, in the in the south of China called Shantou, mm. uh, pretty fairly close to Hong Kong, if you're familiar. Okay. Um, so there, I was uh, teaching uh, at a university called Shantou University. Um, taught there for three years. Mm -hmm. um, and since I had already uh, had a, some, some, some experience with web design, web development, the, in the early days, right, of that, I got an opportunity to, to go back to, into that field, right? And this was a job offer in Shanghai, Uh, which was where I wanted to be in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, you know, that what, what was meant to be two or three years back in China turned into nine years, <laughs> three years in Shantou, and then the, the rest of the six, the other years in Shanghai. Mm -hmm. um, I started uh, as a product manager, a junior product manager at EF Education First in Shanghai, okay. where they have their EF labs there. Um, left that, that about after about three and a half years, almost four years, joined italki. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar, but italki is one of the uh, largest uh, online teach uh, language teaching marketplaces. Okay. Um, and so did that for about two years. And then I got to a point where I was like, hmm, I think I'm <laughs> done with China. I love China. Uh, uh, you know, a little bit of my heart will always be in China, but I think it's time to move mm -hmm. forward. Um, and I, um, uh, it, it's funny because the, the average amount of time that usually, you know, 
foreigners stay in China is two to three years. Right, right. If you're there more than for more than that, you're considered a lifer. And <laughs> I was there for I was there for not, almost nine years, and I got to a point that I was like, if I don't leave now, I'm going to end up being a lifer, right. and maybe that's not what I want. Right. Um, so I, I left China without much of a plan of where to go. I just knew that I had to move myself forward. Right. right? Um, I, I, you know, picked up all my stuff uh, and went to Southeast Asia, mm-hmm. and I was, and I had enough savings to just hang out and uh, do it whatever easy. I needed, <laughs> take it easy for, you know, a few months, maybe a few years if I, if I stretched it right. uh, quite a bit. Um, and then while I'm in Thailand, enjoying myself, I, uh, I, I, I was connected with this company from Abu Dhabi mm. um, who is doing, is doing some pretty awesome stuff in the, in the area of education and technology right. there in the, in the GCC. Um, and back then, you know, I had never thought about going to the Middle East, uh, about going to Abu Dhabi. It was like a very, very far away dream. Uh, mm-hmm. I had never really considered it to be, the, you know, really chased it myself, right? right so right. they had to chase me. They had to come find me. Um, <laughs> and somebody found and you thinking, in Thailand, right? Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> somebody found me in Thailand, right? Uh, well, they found me on LinkedIn, but I was, I happened to well, be in Thailand. Well, that that's time. how they found you, but where you <laughs> were when they found you, that's it. So. Exactly. But I was thinking, uh, you know, I was, uh, you know, they just reached out to me. I was a little bit suspicious, you know, like, you Who know, are this has never guys? happened to me before. Who are these guys, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, so they, they interviewed me. They, there was a couple of interviews, and then they, they offered me the job right away. Mm-hmm. And I and that you know got a little suspicious about that. I was like, oh man, <laughs> is this a scam? <laughs> like, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, right, right. So they they were like, why don't you uh, uh, why don't you want to come, right? And I said, well, you know, there's so many, so much I still need to know about the product, the idea, the team, you know, right. I, I need more than just two 30 minute interviews. Right. right. right? Uh, and they were just like, you know what, just come to Abu Dhabi. We'll pay for you to come. You meet the team, you talk to people and then you make a decision. Sounds, and I was sounds thinking, good. <laughs> great. Uh, yeah. You know, worst case scenario, I get a plane ride to Abu Dhabi and then I'm back to Thailand, right? Uh, and and there you go. So that happened, and I really enjoyed the idea. I really enjoyed the team there. Um, uh, felt very inspired by the leaders there, mm-hmm. and and but I was still a little bit, you know, not entirely sure. Mm-hmm. So my my whole thing was, okay, so this is interesting, really interesting opportunity. Uh, you know, salary is something, the salary there was something that I had never seen before. Right. Uh, and it probably will never see again, to be <laughs> honest with you. Uh, and I thought, Hey, uh, w- worst case scenario, I'm going to go to Abu Dhabi for three months mm-hmm. and then something horrible is going to happen. And then I'll just leave. I'll come back yeah. to Thailand. Right. Right? right. Worst case scenario. And if that happens, you know, like I've bought myself an extra two years of, of just relaxing right. in Thailand. Right. And I went to Abu Dhabi, and those three months became six months, and six months became nine. And then before I knew it, I had my one-year anniversary. Mm. And then, and then uh, towards the end of the second year, uh, I, uh, uh, you know, pandemic hit, oh, all that man. good stuff that came along with it. Right, right. And I saw my opportunity. I was like, uh, uh, you know, something that I, hadn't, I didn't mention is, you know, even before joining Italki, I had already this kind of pull towards coming back to Brazil mm-hmm. uh, on a personal level, um, and and th- but you know the stars were not aligned per se, right? Uh, right. Or maybe so they we were. You were just looking at the wrong yes. stars, right? Absolutely, it's true. I mean, we're looking at the wrong constellations, right? Um, so uh, I think I felt this time was like you know not, the the stars are not exactly aligned. Uh, but you know, this is my move. I, I need to, I need to take it right. Mm-hmm. I'm almost uh, 40. If I don't do this now, I'm probably not going to do it. Right. right? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm not married. So it's, it's easier for me to make a decision like this right? because it only concerns myself. Right. Um, and I just happened to be at the, it just happened to be at the same time where I got reconnected with tutor ID. Mm-hmm. Um, and and it just things just worked out uh, 
they were looking for what I was looking for. Uh, <laughs> that would just match uh, things just matched. And there you go. A uh, few months, you know, spent a few months with my parents in the U S and then flew down here to Lombardina. Wow. So what you have seen, uh, and this is a fact uh, that yeah. obviously one of the things I think that's, that happens anywhere is sort of the fear of the unknown, right? And that's in mm. any circumstance. If you don't know enough yeah. about it, obviously you start uh, not trusting things. Sure. Uh, sure. You obviously went to China, you saw, you went to the States, so obviously with mm-hmm. your parents and that, you didn't really have much of a choice, but you went. Right. Uh, you learned and you understood a culture. You went to China, understood another culture, another way of life. Uh, Thailand was another uh, whole, I'm sure, melting pot of different cultures, right? Oh, absolutely. There's and, a huge culture there. And, and, and then, then when you get, got into Abu Dhabi, even another one. So you've seen mm-hmm. uh, mega cultures, global cultures, which mm-hmm. today overlap in every sense, business sense, cultural sense, whatever. Uh, and and that's really the, the when you talk about a constellation lining up the stars, uh, you mm-hmm. certainly line and Brazil, and now coming mm-hmm. back to Brazil, I'm sure you've been able to with you know with your, your feet on the ground here, uh, able to make a number of different comparisons, right? Uh, understanding yeah. opportunities, understanding challenges, uh, but from in any sense wherever you go, and one thing that I found. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you're with people in a different culture, you, could, you then you start understanding how little people know about the rest of the world. And that can mm. be anywhere. Uh, so if, yeah. you're, if you're in the middle of the United States, even the schools that you went to, uh, mm-hmm. I'm sure you met people that thought you were crazy for going to China. Absolutely. And once you left China, there were people there that thought you were crazy for leaving China. And, and that, that, <laughs> that's just the way it goes. Uh, yeah. The more you yeah. meet and the more you see... Uh, the more mm-hmm. global uh, a b- global believer you are. And what I mentioned mm-hmm. at the beginning, Eva was a person in China. So this is one of the things I find fantastic of right. global networking, global connections uh, of a fine woman in China that can present me to you in Londrina. Yeah. That I, yeah. I never heard of you. You've never heard of me. Right? But to be, yeah. for an American in Brazil, to be presented to a Brazilian in Brazil by a yeah. Chinese woman, that to me is fantastic. Yeah. Just that did, is fantastic. Did, Just did one Eva, thing is fantastic, right? Did Ava tell you a little bit about how we uh, came to know each other? No, 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 no. But that's the essence of connection. We don't have to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, and it's, I think it's interesting, <laughs> and, and, it, and it, it's quite a, uh, uh, um, a, a lesson for networking, uh, because Eva and I knew each other by in passing, right? We kind of had each other's, you know, WeChat numbers. Uh, we had maybe had a few conversations. I think uh, Eva actually, um, the, one of my first interactions with Eva was because I was doing some usability testing in Shanghai, mm. and we needed people to come in. And, and and be a user. Try, try, <laughs> try, try our prototype and tell us about it. Right. Uh, but then, towards the, about six months or so uh, before I left China, I uh, I had ended my contract, uh, my rental contract, and I was looking for a place to live. Mm. And I, I I just posted it on WeChat Moments, and I said, "Does anybody have a room anywhere in Shanghai <laughs> where I can stay for six months?" And the first person who answered it was Ava. And she's like, I have a room, come over, <laughs> right? Uh, uh, here's how much it costs. And I was like, I don't even care how much it costs. I right. know Ava, uh, and uh, I trust her, right. and that's it. Right. Uh, that's so then, the word. That's the word. Yes. That's the word. Uh, so uh, then the, the, the very, you know, the very kind of ephemeral connection that I had with her, uh, we ended up being flatmates for four, six months. Uh, so that turned into evening conversations mm-hmm. uh, about everything, mm-hmm. and and then when I left China, right? She right. she continues to be continues to be uh, a contact of mine, right. and one of my, one of my networks. No, and that's one of the essence. I I agree with you on networking. When I said it doesn't matter how you met or uh, when someone presents me to someone else or suggests right. that I talk to someone else. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't need that whole story. 
Mm-hmm. That's not part mm-hmm. of the context of where did you meet him? How do you know this guy? Yes. Uh, do, do, have you scanned his passport? None of that. Sure. Uh, you know, if, if somebody says, no, talk to this guy, that's it. That's the story I need. Exactly. Uh, you know, it's, that's going from point A to point B exactly. very quickly. So, uh, and that's the trust level. And that happens, Absolutely. that happens throughout the world, but obviously that takes time to <clears> develop. And uh, you can develop that in many different fashions. Uh, it's normally not instantaneous. It, mm-hmm. it normally has some type of a connection like you mentioned, and mm-hmm. I'm sure you have those throughout the world. Uh, yes. And we all do. And, and one of the things I defend not only throughout the world, but here in Brazil is that. And from a Brazilian standpoint, mm-hmm. I, I try to convince Brazilians that that's absolutely important for business mm-hmm. progress worldwide. You need to have yeah. connections. Uh, Not just have connections, but I would say, I would add to that, and I'm sure you'd agree. Uh, having connections is the first step, right? right. But then activating those connections, no, no, using right? them, right. nurturing them, them. absolutely nurturing, nurturing them. them is so uh, important. Uh, and that's the part, yeah. and that's in it. Doesn't have to be daily contacts or convert. Yeah. You just need to be connected and, mm-hmm. and maintain. You need, need to maintain the water warm, right? And that's in any relation. That's a business relation. That's a personal relation. That's business development. Look what you're doing today. Now, that's what I'd like you to tell us about now, because also I found that's amazing, of business management tools for tutors, a a marketplace to grow business, right? Now, you're connecting educational platforms, people who know Mm -hmm. to people who need to know, right? Absolutely. How how does that that work? How How does that work? What you just said, I'm going to use your words. You know, it, it encompasses exactly what we do. We, what we're doing is we are connecting uh, people who know with people who need to know, right? Mm-hmm. So that's very important. All of our tools that we build, uh, all the technology we've invested in uh, to develop this product, it all comes down to that, connecting people to teach and to learn. Right. And that's worldwide. Uh, You're not just doing that in Brazil. That's worldwide. That's worldwide. Uh, uh, we were accepting, you know, tutors from anywhere mm-hmm. who teach anything. And we're accepting, of course, uh, as uh, learners and students who want to learn right. from anywhere in the world. Of course, the um, let me take a, a little step back here. So I'm a co-founder of Tutor ID, but I am what you call a late addition co-founder. So I, I joined Tutor ID in April. Mm-hmm. of this year, mm-hmm. right? But Tutor ID has been around, um, a, a, you know, since 2017, uh, right. probably probably 2016, actually. Um, and and I, I got to actually, I got to know about Tutor ID uh, when I was working with italki. Mm. And I was doing, I was doing some competitive analysis. Right, right, and I came right. across, I came across that uh, Tutor ID. And uh, back then, uh, Tutor ID was not a marketplace. It was a, uh, it was a, exactly a, just management tools for tutors. So mm-hmm. you are a tutor, and you 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 do private tuition, um, and maybe you have five students or twenty five students or fifty right. students. Right. The more students you have, the heavier the burden is of managing the business obviously, operation side obviously. of things. And yeah, that's an any business, right? That's any Absolutely. Business. Absolutely. And, and, and tutors are especially unprepared for it because they think they can handle it. Right. 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 So scheduling, cancellations, payment, follow-up, right. Uh, um, uh, you know, managing the lesson, man- managing the student. If you have three, four students, you're fine. Right. Mm-hmm. You can do that yourself. Right. When you start getting to that, Kind of critical number, um, then you start spending 10, 15, 20, 30 hours a week just managing your business. So that's right, the right, story right, right. of actually our CEO, right. um, uh, Karen V. Ordonis, uh, where she was one of these tutors in Brazil. Mm. Uh, and, she, and she got to a point where she kind of drove herself into the ground trying to manage. Right, right. Uh, and she had the luck of having parents that would help her, right? <laughs> So her, her mom would help her with scheduling. Her father would follow up with people and get the money. Uh, so she had somebody to, to kind of go collect, right? The dog or, would bark when somebody was hungry, right? Absolutely, absolutely. But, uh, you know, she realized, um, well, I mean, you know, she's pretty lucky to have her parents, but not everybody does that, right? right? right not everybody right. has that kind of support. Right. So let me deal with a tool to help tutors do that, right? Right. So when I came across Tutor ID, that's what a Tutor ID was. It was a 
CRM, uh, customer relationship mm -hmm. management tool mm -hmm. for tutors, right. right? Taking care of everything. Um, and then, you know, left I talkie, I'm in, I'm in Abu Dhabi, um, and, and tutor ID decides to, okay, we've, we have a lot of good tutors in our platform. Right. Why don't we give them also the ability to acquire students through our platform, right? right? right. Let's launch a marketplace, right. right? So they did that in the beginning of 2019. Mm -hmm. um, and then after a little while, was, for one reason or another, I can't remember right now, I got reconnected with, with Karen um, uh, because I had, I had already kind of sent her a couple of messages back when I was in, in, in somewhere. Uh, <laughs> somewhere, somewhere, <laughs> somewhere. Uh, and, and at the same time I was, you know, thinking about leaving and going back to Brazil. So mm. I, you know, we, we got connected, we had a little virtual coffee time, or we just kind of talked over, you know, the, the, the tutoring education business globally, specifically mm. in Brazil, in China and so on, how much that's growing. And then a few months later, I, I sent her another message saying, hey, I'm going back to Brazil, right? I, I, and if you guys need any help with anything, let me know. Just call and that's me. exactly <laughs> what they were looking. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what they were looking for. They were looking for uh, product management support um, and offered for me to come in as a co-founder. And I accepted it faster than you could blink twice. <laughs> I, of course... Of course, I, I, I made it look like I was thinking over it, right? Yeah. But in my heart, my heart had already accepted it. Uh, uh, I, I had to make it look like I was still considering it. So it took me a few days to, to let them know. And that's how I got connect, connected to to their ID. No, but so even, even we, at that point that you just made, you, you need to take a couple of days, uh, you know, for, yeah. uh, you, have to, you need to get over the excitement. Uh, yes. You, you yes. Need to, you it's need like to when they say, the when, when you move a refrigerator, Right, you uh -huh. just can't plug it in. You need to let it settle for a while, right? right. And and when right. it's settle, if you do it too fast, then the oil's not where it's supposed to be, and you can burn it out. So I, I yeah. think that time, and it could be a day, it could yeah. be a couple hours, but you need to, you know, take a walk around the block. You have to do something, and and you need to let Absolutely. things settle down uh, and reevaluate. That's really taking two steps back, really, to look at yourself again or the opportunity. Absolutely, I'm not saying it's good or Absolutely. bad, but. Uh, uh, no, that, it's probably, it's probably very good. Yeah. It's probably very good. Um, yeah, and so I mean, one of the reasons why I was so I, I was so you know endeared to Twitter ID, enjoying Twitter Twitter ID. I took a couple of days to con to try to convince myself of the reasons why I shouldn't do it, and I <laughs> and I wasn't able to. <laughs> I was not able to because it, because it included everything that I I, I love to do, which right. is working with teachers, working with students. Uh, doing something that is, you know, valuable for society, which is adding, adding learning and teaching and social mobility ultimately, right? right? Uh, to people who, who who want to upskill or learn something new or or you know catch up, right? And that today um, that that's sort of like seven billion people, right? Yeah. Uh, and and yeah. we look, uh, you know, when you go back to when you were twelve and you left, uh, yeah. actually your life journey has always been a path of education one way or another in different places of learning and reapplying. And that's a process. Absolutely. And when Absolutely. we talk, everybody says today we have to be a, per, a perpetual learner uh, and ongoing education is a must. That's for anybody. You can be 12 years old mm -hmm. or, or 90. Uh, we need to learn constantly. And what I, I've seen on your site, what you're offering uh, is exactly that. The world knows that it needs to learn. Most people, mm -hmm. and I'll put those most uh, back mm -hmm. in because we do have to analyze that from a, a different age classifications. The younger yeah. persons know uh, that it's just not the technical knowledge that's going to get them anywhere. Right? Yeah. And the technical knowledge changes every 15 minutes. So quickly. Yeah. So, and I, that's in anything. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. not saying that languages don't and the other things that you offer don't. But mm -hmm. you know, for a global business world, uh, and mm -hmm. you, you know that global interaction is in English. Mm -hmm. That's anywhere. So as, as you roamed around the world, as you've done your business, uh, either obviously in the middle of the United States, that's a, you know that's a no brainer. You need to speak English, right? But when you're yeah. out there in the Philippines or on the beach, if you walked around Abu Dhabi, uh, uh, Anywhere you are, what you are doing today, mm -hmm. a global platform, you need to speak and understand English. 
Absolutely. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Is, is, yep, <laughs> absolutely. And English is our, you know, uh, like I mentioned before, we teach we uh, we teach any any subject. Uh, if you are a tutor and you go into Tutor ID and you don't find the subject that you want to teach, you simply you add it and we approve it. Right? Uh, right. Within within reason, we we, right. we approve it on the on the fly, right? Uh, and you're able to teach that. So you know. Um, uh, we do have a lot of English teachers. We also have a lot of Portuguese teachers that right. speak English, right? In yeah, but you also have uh, more so, specifically subject teachers, right? Uh, absolutely. It's not so only then, language, uh, it's everything else. That's what I, yeah, that's what I was uh, trying to get to is that absolutely the, the number one largest uh, subject that we have is English. Mm -hmm. uh, now, that's English. Uh, it's not just English. It's business English or, right. or conversational English right. or English for journalism or English for aviation, right. English for medicine and so on. Right. So I think uh, Twitter ID is one of the very few places, if not the only place, where you, you're going to go in and you're going to find not just English teachers. That you can find anywhere, right? right. You're right. going to find an English teacher just very specific to your need, right? right? What we call uh, ESP, right? English for specific purposes. Mm. Um, but then other than the, the languages itself, we have all kinds of languages. Uh, we have, you know, more, more school subject specific, right? right. So right. The, the biggest one we have is obviously mathematics, right? Um, <laughs> right. So, uh, you know, teachers from Brazil, uh, teachers from the U.S., teachers from India, all teaching mathematics on the platform. Uh, and then you choose what, what is it that you want to learn from what kind of teacher do you want to learn? Right. Do you want to learn the same thing from two different teachers? Right. Or see three, what, what right? sticks best yeah. or yeah. see what sticks best. And that's that's the awesome thing about the platform. And then, of course, the, 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 the third uh, really cool uh, subject that we have is coding. So programming for mm. kids mm. right so that's that's exploding uh, as well i mean uh, a lot of people are getting really into that and you, you can find you know coding classes that are not teacher led anywhere right, right. right but if you want someone to follow up with your kid right really understand uh where they are really take them to the next level right. when it comes to coding the tutor ID is the place to be and uh you can find coding teachers from there we have our own curriculum we have our own software that helps to with that it's pretty awesome and that's actually really the the, the language of the future the language of the present yep. is coding so i think Absolutely. you guys are right on well philippe i want to thank you Absolutely. we're coming to the end of our time uh but certainly want to congratulate you on the journey what you're doing how you're doing it where you're doing it right yes thank you Tom. and uh wish you and all luck and highly recommend tutor id Okay. Yeah. And thank you for sharing uh, your information with us today. All right. Much appreciated. Thank you, Tom. And thanks for not only your time. I want our listeners to know they can find more about Felipe on LinkedIn. And his name is Felipe Wesley Gisolson. That's F I L I P E Wesley W E S L E Y de Souza S O U Z A. You'll find that on LinkedIn. On LinkedIn, he invites everybody for a virtual coffee. That could be in English yeah, or do. Portuguese. And as well as the Tutor ID. That's T U T O R dot ID website. Okay? Okay. Thank you and very much again. My, yep. And also, thank want you. to share uh, with our listeners, thank you for sharing your time. You can find more about us as well and our sponsor, Focus MI Market Intelligence. Focus MI specializes in market research for the Brazilian agricultural market and more about them on their site, which is focusmi.com. Visit our website, talktobrazil.com. Find our previous shows of Talk to Brazil, which are also available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube, and many others. Remember, when you talk to Tom, you talk to Brazil and the world. Goodbye, and thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to Tom Riach on Talk to Brazil, the business connector to Brazil. 